Welcome to the next section of the Critical Care Survival Guide. This is Vent 101, so we're going to focus on finding your data on the ventilator and understanding ventilator modes. Let's get started. First, let's talk about where to find ventilator data. On my right, you'll see a Puritan Bennett ventilator, which is what we use at Wishard in the VA. On my left, you'll see a servo ventilator, which is what we use at Methodist and University Hospitals. These ventilators have both have the same capabilities, but you need to know where to look for data because it shows up in different places. To start with, you'll want to find your ventilator mode, shown here in the Puritan Bennett, where we're in ACVC+. And on the left in the servo, you'll see that we're in PRVC. It's important to note that these ventilators modes are actually the same, they just have different names because they're different brands. The next thing you'll want to look at is your set tidal volume, showing up here, followed by your set respiratory rate, your FiO2, and your PEEP. Once you've found these modes set on the ventilator, you'll understand what mode your, your patient's in currently. Then you can look at some of the variables. So these show up across the top in the Puritan Bennett ventilator. You'll see your peak pressure, your respiratory rate of your patient, and the exhaled tidal volume of your patient. And these will vary from minute to minute and breath to breath. These are shown also on the side on the servo ventilator. It's important to realize that in ventilators, we can control either pressure or volume. So if you report during rounds that your patient's in ACVC plus, which is a volume mode, you also want to know what their pressures are. So this is where you're going to look for things like peak pressures to report during rounds also. The last thing you'll look at on your ventilator is going to be your ventilator waveforms to try to figure out if your patient's synchronous with the ventilator, is breathing on their own, and so forth. Let's move into talking about a few different ventilator modes. The first, first mode that we'll look at in the ICU is assist control volume control, shown here. Like I said, we can control either pressure or volume. So as the name suggests, this mode controls volume. That means you're gonna set tidal volume in this mode, as well as respiratory rate, PEEP, and FiO2. These breaths are all gonna look pretty much the same because you're telling the ventilator exactly how to deliver them based on the tidal volume volume, the rate, and uh, the flow, which is frequently set by the respiratory therapist. If the patient's breathing over your set rate, it's important to realize that all of their breaths are going to be fully assisted in this mode of ventilation. Let's move on to Assist Control Plus, or ACVC Plus. Remember that this is similar to PRVC, to PRVC on the servo vent we saw. The one thing that's different about ACVC Plus as compared to the previous mode is that this is actually kind of a smart vent version. So what it does is as the, the patient takes a breath, every few breaths it analyzes how fast the patient wants to breathe and how big of a breath they're wanting to take. It's still going to set their limit or their tidal volume wherever you've put it, but it averages uh, from every few breaths how to deliver the breath to the patient. So the same patient who's awake, maybe anxious, who's breathing fast and pulling volumes quickly compared to an hour later who's asleep, it will vary how those breaths are delivered. And what you'll see on the flow volume loops is that there'll be some variation in, in from breath to breath and minute to minute. It's also important to note that this, this mode will deliver breaths at the lowest possible uh, peak pressures. So for this reason, this is why this mode is used most frequently in the ICU on critically ill patients. Let's move on to pressure control. I'll tell you, we don't use a lot of pressure control, but it works with the same concepts. So just like we could control volume previously, here we're controlling pressure. You set your peak inspiratory, your inspiratory pressure here, set at 15. Your peeps stayed at five, just like it did with the other, other modes on the ventilator. But your combined pressure that you're receiving actually still co combines both of those together. So you see your peak inspiratory pressures are gonna be right around 20 in this mode. And then your tidal volume will vary from breath to breath. All three of these last three, all three of these last modes are fully supported breaths again. So if the patient takes more breaths than what you have set for the ventilator to deliver, all of those breaths are going to be fully supported. It's important to recognize as we move on to volume support. So when we take volume support breaths, the patient's actually deciding how many breaths, and these are these are supported based on how much tidal volume you set in a volume support 
alert mode, but there's no set rate. The vent's not enough to have an apnea alarm built in, so if the patient were to stop breathing, they'd still get breaths, but otherwise they can breathe as slow or as fast as they want to. Again, because you've set volume, your pressure is going to be what varies. Next, we'll talk about pressure support. So pressure support is actually one of the most commonly used modes for vent weaning. Uh, typically, we use a pressure of set five or seven. So that's reported as seven over five, which is the inspiratory pressure of seven over the PEEP of five. And that's what we use most frequently for ventilator weaning or spontaneous breathing trials, as you may have heard. So what you'll do is you'll put your patient in seven over five. Again, they have no respiratory rate to go with this and they're going to breathe however much they want to breathe. But remember their tidal volume will be what varies from breath to breath. So if you're assessing if your patient's ready for extubation, you want to make sure their tidal volumes are adequate, they're not too tachypnic, that they're awake, able to follow commands, they don't have excessive secretions. Part of how we, how we monitor and measure this is something called a rapid shallow breathing index, which is the respiratory rate divided by the tidal volume in liters. So here we have a respiratory rate around 22, a tidal volume of, of a little over 400. So that leads to a rapid shallow breathing index of about 50. If we have a rapid shallow breathing index less than 105, we think that our patient's probably ready for extubations provided they've met these other criteria. <clears throat> The last mode of ventilation that we'll talk about briefly is called SIMV, or synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. It sounds complicated, but it's actually just combining some of the modes we've already talked about. So when you set a rate on this ventilator, here eight, your patient is automatically gonna get eight breaths every single minute for the tidal volume that you've set here. However, most patients aren't gonna breathe eight times a minute, so the rest of the breaths they take, in this case around 20, those extra 12 breaths above eight are gonna be supported breaths. So in this case, we picked a pressure support of five, so they'll get a total of 10 of inspiratory pressure, again, including the PEEP, for those extra breaths. And you see this on the waveforms here, because there are some breaths that are bigger, some that are smaller, and the smaller ones are their supported breaths. So if you're asking yourself which one is best, in general, as with most things in the ICU, this depends on the patient, but I'll give you a few hints. If your patient is critically ill, you should be on ACVC plus or ACVC. Again, we prefer ACVC plus because this will target the lowest possible pressures and is that smart ventilator mode. If your patient is not quite ready for extubation but is pretty stable from a respiratory standpoint, they might, be, they might do very well with volume support. Again, kind of letting them take their own breaths and training those muscles, but not expecting them to do all the work, as much work on their own as pressure support would. And finally, use pressure support ventilators for modes for ventilator weaning. I hope that's helpful. This concludes this section of the ICU Critical Care Survival Guide. Uh, thanks for watching.